Hello and welcome to the Helios blog. My name is Helios here for another reaction video. Today, Hassan gets interviewed on the Almost Adulting podcast. Let's get into it. The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, like, y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. Let me, this is my thought when I first met you. So when I first met you, obviously I saw how tall you are and I was like, that guy's hot. And then I got. <laughs> wow, what a surprise. You mean the first thing that girls look at is height, which is something that men can't control. And yeah, there's even this adage that goes, what do you call a guy who's less than six feet, a friend and so on, right? And these girls are so unashamedly unapologetic about this, right? Meanwhile, if you go to another country, right? Girls will kind of kindly and happily accept five foot seven, five foot eight, five foot nine, doesn't matter, right? But no, in, in the Western world, six foot plus or bust. <laughs> I was like, cool, I like that. And then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's so crazy. The way you look versus your personality is completely different. You're right, exactly. Hassan is basically a total beta max, right? But he looks like a child. You're much softer, not not in a savage. Bad way. You're like you're you're sweet and you're kind, and you you come you end up coming much sweeter. So a lot of times, I think maybe that's where it can come off as that when you see you from far and that's why he dates janice griffith right and not an actual nice girl who would be respectful to him because look look he's not even happy with what he heard you see his arms are crossed he looks upset at this it's like girls are telling you dude that your personality is what's messed up right you are a beta max you're an npc the girls are telling you you just need to listen. You're like, oh, this guy's a badass. But then what you get What do you mean? Am I not a badass? I'm a soft ass, not a badass? Well, that's like, right. you're sweeter. So I think that's where maybe the teddy bear <laughs> comes from. So okay. regarding like... What would be cooler? Like if I was just like kind of a badass, like, yo, what's up? Like an arrogant type of like vibe. Like I'm really tall. I already think people still think I'm arrogant though. I know but if they get to know you, if they start talking to you. Yeah. You're much like easier and softer. I was actually taken back. Yeah, you see? And again, it's really funny, right? Because she's telling him exactly why he's unsuccessful in his relationships, right? She's telling him exactly why. It's because she's telling him the truth, which is, bro, you're a loser. You look like an attractive, handsome man, but you're actually a loser, right? Which is, um, and this is the, the adage in relationships. It says, be attractive, don't be unattractive. He's passed the first one. He is attractive. He's very attractive. But he hasn't passed the second one, which is don't be unattractive. Now, whether a person would actually want to be attractive for this girl, that's anyone's guess. But, you know, that's that's neither here nor there, right? Okay. Anyway, uh, time for some shilling. Go to my Patreon and subscribe. Patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Buy my books. Bit.ly slash Helios books. Drop me a donation like hey, Hunter M, Adrian R, Tom M, links in the description. And hit the like, hit that subscribe. Okay, I'm done shilling. Let's continue. Back by like how sweet and soft you were. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So sweet, so like, soft. I would ruin this guy if I dated him. <laughs> you see? You see what I'm saying, guys? Look, look, his son's reaction is hilarious. But yeah, like, so the girls are all thinking about dating you. But you literally destroy yourself by being soft and a loser. Whereas it's the reverse, right? If you're not as attractive, but the girl talks to you and she's like, oh, this guy's kind of a badass, you know? That's also, that, it's the reverse. It has the reverse effect. <laughs> that would destroy him. That's true. I am very, um, I'm very uh, gentle. I try to be, but not in the bedroom. <laughs> That is like one, that's one area where I am, um, I like to be dominant. So maybe we would clash if we did have sex. Well, you're a Leo, right? Mm -hmm. You believe in zodiac signs? Mm -mm. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Again, like, here's what I, like, 
it's really funny that he says, but not in the bedroom. Like, again, his ego got hurt so much, and men's ego is associated with... Men's ego is associated with their bedroom fun. So when a guy is told you're soft, you're weak, you're gentle and kind, he's immediately going to go, but not in the bedroom. It doesn't matter. You'll never get to the bedroom. Sure. <laughs> like, okay. Talk about all this I, cool. I forgot about this. This is actually really cool. So you were born in New Jersey, mm-hmm. but you then moved back to Turkey. I'm an anchor baby. So like, uh, I was born here so I could have a U.S. citizenship, oh, which is something cool. that Donald Trump is trying to take away. By the way. Gotcha. And reverse, not good. Um, uh, there are a lot of Russian anchor babies as well. But yeah, I uh, I was born here so I could have citizenship, and then I just grew up in Turkey. And then when did you move back to the U.S.? I moved back to the U.S. when I was 18, so I could go to college here, to the University of Miami. So did you, were you speaking English in Turkey? Um, no, I spoke Turkish. I speak fluent Turkish. You speak t- uh, Turkish, German, German. It's very little German. It, like, doesn't count anymore. I in don't English. Really remember anything. Would um, you speak Arabic? No. Just oh. bad curse words like, But that's also Hebrew, by the way. Oh, Arabic, really? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's also it's that's just like just a different dialect, kind of. Like oh. it just sounds like it sounds a little different when you say it. like, "sharmuta" instead of "shavmuta." Sha- um, I do know some Arabic. I used to speak it fluently, but uh, so is Turkish similar to Arabic at all? No, not at all. Oh, so I can say like "ahlan wa sahlan malima Hassan." Um, I have no idea what you said, but I'm assuming you said my name is Hassan in the end of it. Hi, how are you, Hassan? Oh, okay. I can count. Well, Meraba and Merhaba is like Merhaba, or right? Isn't Meraba? Meraba is uh, Meraba is uh, hi in Turkish or Selam. Uh, oh, Selam. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's also in Farsi. Yeah, yeah. So there's like similarities, but uh, Turkish is still, I think, very different. I mean, they were all influenced by the Arabian Empire, which later got taken over by the Ottoman Empire. But they they were Muslim, so they spoke Arabic, uh, and of course Turkish, right? So uh, I don't remember exactly uh, how how uh, the ruling class was in uh, in the Ottoman Empire. I believe they did actually speak Turkish, but um, I, I could be wrong about this, uh, or it could be that in order to be like Muslim back then, you needed to know how to speak Arabic. Certainly, they were influenced by Arabian culture. Certainly, and by this they would have some arabic words in their language for sure this is without a doubt um but again i'm not very I'm not very experienced in in that that avenue of history unfortunately oh. it doesn't so how do I, how do you say hey how are you merhaba nasılsın i'm sorry say that again merhaba nasılsın merhaba 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 yeah Nusselson. Nusselson. Sounds like you're stuttering. Nusselson. Nusselson. No, I'm not. I can say it. Yeah, no, it's very different. It's That's very so different cool. Language. Yeah. How do you say hi, how are you in German? Um, How do I say it? Hello. Uh, well, once do, I think, right? Isn't it? How, how did you learn how to speak that? Uh, I actually, I don't even know if it's well, once do. I, I, uh, I learned it in school. Oh, it's, it's not like um, it's like Spanish in the, um, the U.S. Yeah, it's like terrible. I, I, I know that like they say it, it says it everywhere that I speak German and I'm always like, I can't. And also, I don't need to because there's so many Turkish people in Germany. So like every time I go to Germany, I'm never lost. And basically everyone tur- speaks Turkish, especially in Berlin. <laughs> oh, that's so cool, though, that you speak yeah. more than one language. Actually, that that's pretty funny uh, because on the national uh, German soccer team used to be uh, Özil, who who was Turkish. Uh, by you know, I assume he was born in Germany, but his family is Turkish. So there you go. Uh, so it's it's pretty funny that he's uh, he's mentioning this. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, basically, this is just a date, right? And we're, we're commenting on it. It's, uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I still feel that the girl is attracted to Hassan. That's what it seems like to me, even though she's, may, maybe her calling him a teddy bear is a crap test, you know? And if he passes, then he's fine. Because it, it, it doesn't seem to me like she's not attracted to him and, and like cold and um, not interested. But possibly she sees him as a wallet as a result of, 
um, her comments of uh, him being a teddy bear. We'll, we'll see. Let's, let's see how the conversation develops. And another thing, when I was reading about you, it said that you went to college. Um, but then I, I couldn't tell how many degrees you have because it said a few different universities. So I couldn't tell if it was you got a few degrees or you just kept transferring. No. So I went to University of Miami first and then I transferred after the first year and I transferred to Rutgers and I graduated from Rutgers with a double major. So I got a comms degree on top of my political science degree, but I don't even mention it because like everyone laughs because when you say communications uh, <laughs> degree, you know. Right. So he he's a he's a joke, right? Like his his education is not he's not very educated, and actually now I understand his uh, his political opinion entirely. He is a man, but he went to university and studied like a woman. So he took, he studied like a useless, he got two useless degrees, right? Like a double major, right? Which is pr practically like, I mean, he got one degree, but it's a double major. So it's like he majored in two things. But anyway, communications, which is useless. You can't get a job with that. And political science, also useless. And you can't get a job with that. And I also understand his political stance now because all the universities in the US, they're preaching um, like leftist garbage, which is why Hassan is so skilled in the leftist garbage rhetoric, because he literally went to brainwash school for it. That makes total sense. And at Rutgers, n no less. Yeah. When a girl says I'm studying communication, it's like you're just waiting to get married. <laughs> that's usually like, you know, that's what's up. I mean, there's not a lot of job opportunities for any particular major at this. Uh, that's not true. Uh, I'll get into that in a second, but. Yeah, uh, used to be the case, right? That uh, she's trying to get her MRS degree. That's what they called it. I think that's pretty funny, right? Like she's MRS, like misses, you know, like she's trying to marry one of the guys at university. And I guess to some extent, some girls still do it. But in 2023, girls aren't marrying at, 20, at 23, 24. They're still chasing Chad. They marry at 28 to 35. They don't marry in, in school. It's pretty funny that she said that. Uh, this this girl is um what what did she say she's Palestinian I believe if I, if I'm not mistaken I think I, I was reading the comments and so and anyway of course they have an older world thinking right so these the, the girls get married younger although she didn't and she has pink hair so you know she's probably not Muslim but uh, or at least not you know not as Muslim as her parents would like all bad but anyway. That's neither here nor there. Again, who am I to judge? I don't, I don't know them or her story, so whatever. Anyway, uh -huh, says the guy who's doing reaction videos on Hassan. Uh, but yeah, there are university degrees that do lead to good jobs, okay? So here they are. Are you ready? Medicine, law, pharmacy, uh, computer science, uh, computer programming, um, accounting, which is a business degree, um, you could also get a uh, mathematics degree. Um, did I mention programming already? I believe I did. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And if, if you're in, you know, the Nordic countries or maybe Canada or I don't know about Australia, I, uh, then uh, probably teaching is also, but not in the United States. In the United States, it's uh, teaching is like a crappy job. Like it's, you, you like it's worse than being like um you get paid about as much as a mcdonald's worker for being a teacher like imagine that in the united states which explains why so many people are uneducated right at this point even stem careers are are uh, hard to find but uh yeah because they're competitive like really bottom of the barrel I, I i i'll admit like as someone who has that uh, degree like the only thing I remember is like the Saphir Wharf uh, hypothesis I don't even know what that is but yeah you uh your culture like you learn a lot more about a culture like your cultural understanding is drastically different if you uh also speak the language fluently oh I think you can uh, agree with that right yes 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 yeah. I do agree with that I have I mean I have two degrees I also have double majored in accounting and business law and uh I don't use them yeah but those are actually legitimate like those are legitimate degrees that you could actually get a good job with if you wanted and uh i mean she has a podcast with forty thousand subscribers so she is using her her business degree well so no that's she's actually using her degree properly 
Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure you kind of use your account. Wait, do you do your own taxes? No, I don't need to get audited. That's <laughs> just really stupid if I did that. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know. but I mean, I can review obviously my tax returns, but in general, I think everyone should have a basic understanding when it comes to accounting. True. But, but I think there's a reason why there's those huge accounting books with like all these laws so people so accountants can keep their jobs because <laughs> like <laughs> if you can well, you know i mean what's insane about this process is that uh in the most american way uh, possible the government has essentially outsourced uh, a lot of those like accounting services mm -hmm. right almost in its entirety whereas if you go to nordic countries or scandinavian countries um the government will do your taxes for you and then just essentially send you a check in the end of the year um, actually, in the U.S., the government will do your taxes. If you make $50,000 or less, the IRS does your taxes. Oh, really? I volunteered every year um, during during school, after school. Um, I made less than $50,000 a year for, like, many years when I first there's started. There's programs <laughs> by the IRS where they provide you. I did, every year I did people's taxes, anyone that made less than um, 50000 You know, let's move past that. I did... I did, I don't wanna, the reason I don't wanna talk about politics, I know it's like your bread and butter, but I did really just wanna get to know who you are as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. I think people get to see, <laughs> they get to see like this sweater looking teddy bear on Instagram, which by the way, True. the gays love you. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. I, I used to have, I think it was like 70% of my audience was female. And now that number has reduced as I've grown to like, I think it's like 59% of my audience is female. Oh, really? Well, again, why would so much of his audience be female? Because what are girls looking for? They're looking for a guy who's six foot plus. He's six foot four. That meets the bill. Who at the same time also thinks like they do. I mean, on paper, that's what they say they want, right? They're not actually attracted to that, but that's what they say they want. They'd, you know, they'd be turned off by this pretty much immediately um not immediately but you know within six months of of dating a guy who actually thinks how they do but you know they say that that's what they want um and hassan fits the bill so it's just a uh, hypergamy right really yeah yeah so the gays love you and i understand like even my hairdresser when he one time he was like i saw you post you commented some thirsty comments on uh hassan's uh instagram like what's going on there are you trying to hit that and i was like oh my god he's my friend i'm just like <laughs> i'm being nice that's like if i'm trying to hit a, like i'm very secretive when it comes to actually anyone i'm dating me too so if i am I feel like when I'm commenting on someone's pictures, liking them, that means like nothing's happening. If suddenly you see me like going silent, that means like I am may pot potentially be talking to them. There you have it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So girls being secretive, that's no, you know, obviously because you want to hide your end count. So that makes total, that makes total sense. Um, it's really funny because she says she posted that stuff on Hassan's feed to be nice. That's literally what girls do to each other. So in her mind, she sees Hassan as a girl, right? That's clear as day. There it is, folks. So if you want to be seen as a girl, if you want to be treated the same way as a girl, just act like Hassan does. And you'll eliminate any possibility of attraction from women. There it is. Gentlemen, make sure to make sure to track uh, Violet's. <laughs> Make sure to track her Instagram movements. See who she was commenting on and then stopped mysteriously. <laughs> After this, if she stops commenting <laughs> on my on my photos, you already know what's going on. I'm hitting it. I'm <laughs> pegging it. I'm You're kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my cheeks. Very disrespectful. Um, <laughs> okay, but Very so disrespectful. I do want to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah. I was wondering, what do you wish you would have known um, when you first started out that you didn't know to make your life easier? It just in social media Ooh. world and all that um get on every platform when it's blowing up so get on true. every platform like it doesn't matter it, and and don't be afraid to rip other people off like as in like steal not steal but like copy their content cuz like no one cares honestly yeah. Yeah. like literally no one cares every single vine influencer that is gigantic now and and actually does create original content in one way or another started off by doing hacky comedian bits that they totally ripped 
uh, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from like other uh, comics who have probably been al also stealing those bits. They were just in the right place at the right time and they worked hard. I can't relate because I'm always original. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just like, oh, what's the deal with airplane food turned into like a seven second vine uh, a compilation? And then you started cultivating a following. And then you were propelled upwards just by virtue of having that following. Okay, but what else do you wish you would have known when you first started? Like, for example, if I could think, I think I, I trusted too many people or I didn't really understand this, like, industry, so I got, like, played by a lot of people. Do you have any of those experiences? Um, I think one thing I would uh, recommend my younger self is, like, be careful what you post on the Internet. I mean, I think we're from the same generation like we're not zoomers right we're not like the next next generation we're not like 14 years old doing Fortnite dances right now so they have a better understanding of like how uh how f uh permanent things are on the internet which is why all the platforms are like snapchat and even instagram have like stories that you can stories that delete itself right. uh, or are hard to find after a certain amount of time has passed whereas like uh, Twitter is permanent and when we first started Twitter we were probably just like I'm trying to be funny no one's paying attention <laughs> yeah. to me let me just like type out a random thought that I had right in that moment and and I feel like that will come back and bite you in the ass have you ever gone through your Twitter and deleted things from like years ago so well, oh of course I had a bunch of I had like I had like bad tweets and stuff but not like nothing terrible but um, it was just like Kirsten Gillibrand can get it is like a female a politician from uh or yeah I think she's running for president now um stuff like that that people were like oh I can't believe how like this supposed woke bay is writing these things and the people who were doing that were like literal Nazis <laughs> because they're very good on the internet the alt-right is like super powerful on the internet and they have a bunch of fucking psycho kids that just like comb through everything they do like and they'll find like all the problematic right. stuff that you said and then weaponize that against you uh, disingenuously as yeah okay i see but it's true um like you got to be careful what you post online and uh just think about it <sighs> like don't post stuff that you wouldn't want your grandma hearing basically <laughs> So if you're, you know, swearing online or being like highly disrespectful or all of that, you, you need to you need to watch out for that. Like even even my YouTube channel, right? Like it's basically just telling people to make better decisions effectively. It's it's not really like terrible. Although some people would say, "Oh, who are you to tell me what to do?" It's like, well, you know, it's my opinion. Like if you you take it or leave it, seriously. All right. Uh, okay, two hours ago, posted on relationship advice, uh, best friend, so it's the guy, uh, the guy is 19 and she's 18, told me he doesn't want anything to do with me if I don't date him. I mean, this is a classic, it's, this is called the sniper mentality, right? Where a guy, he goes, uh, he, he like waits for his perfect moment to get with that perfect angel that he's always wanted to be with, right? And uh, he takes his shot and of course he fails because that's the wrong mentality to have. And there it is. All right. Some of our past before getting on topic. Best friend, let's call him Z, and I met through my ex. Oh, oh well, okay. <laughs> it's already obvious. Q and Z were best friends for four years, and when Q and I started online dating, he introduced me to Z. Z and I became good friends, and when Q and I started going downhill, Z helped us resolve issues. So literally, Z was trying to stir the pot so he could get with her. That's what's happening. He got friend zoned, and he was looking for his opportunity. Eventually, after a few months, we broke up, and somehow Z chose me as a friend over Q, and this ended their friendship. Wow, what a surprise. Since then, Z and I have been best friends. A couple months after my breakup with Q, Z's relationship also ended, and helped him. And I helped him move on. Since then, he's been into me. He wanted to date me ever since, but I kept saying no to, to multiple reasons, and the main reason is I'm not into him. He then proceeded to hurt me as a friend and betrayed my trust multiple times. There was a girl who liked him, but he told her he's into me, and so the girl got angry and started threatening me, and I, it got really nasty. 
When this happened, I was mourning someone and it affected me a lot. I told this to Z and he reassured me, saying he'll handle. He did not. The next month was terrible for me because I caught up in this drama for too long. I finally decided to give Z an ultimatum. It's her or me, and his first reaction was, if you date me, she'll go. I was so pissed and I told him if he, if he considered me his best friend, he wouldn't mind doing this because he doesn't have any interest in her and she's hurting him also. He told me how she's a distraction from me and then I proceeded to stop talking to him altogether. A couple of days later, he started apologizing and told me how he, blocked, uh, how he blocked her and I forgave. Fast forward to now, a week back, I found that he's still talking to her and the way he tricked me was, that it was what pissed me off. A few months back, I found her in his um, PVT, I don't know what that means. He told me that his girl isn't that bad and she's something else altogether. And I believed it. Now a week back on her birthday, I found out he's been tricking me and lying for months and I got so mad and then started blaming me for it because according to him, he wouldn't go to her uh, if I just said yes. Uh, he put some conditions and said he won't block her and uh, I have to call him off her and otherwise he'll stop talking to me but this is something he's done in the past too. I have to cry and beg and genuinely lose my ni- my mind to make him stay to try to just be, uh, to try and just be friends. <laughs> this is the classic example of a girl who... Um, this is a classic example of a girl who's getting everything she she would normally get out of a boyfriend and then she goes and sleeps with Chad. So he's the guy that she talks to. So if you're not the boyfriend, you're the girlfriend. Don't be the boyfriend if you're not getting bedroom fun. Top comment. This guy is not your friend. Accurate. He just wants to sleep with you. Uh, he's not your friend. He made it clear that he only wants to hook up with you. He's willing to string along another girl and use her against you. Now he's made the friendship conditional in his favor. You should just drop this guy and move on with your life. Yup. Yeah, it's true. All right, we're going to end the video there again. Uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe, go to my Patreon and subscribe. Patreon.com slash the Helios blog. Drop me a donation like Hunter M, Adrian R, Tom M. Uh, and, um, Take care of yourselves, guys. Link is in the description, by the way. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time.